Okay, let's go ahead and turn in our Bibles to Psalm 64. Pete, if you could make this go back down to minimize, I had to bring it up to the report. I can't remember. I can't get it to go back down. What's that? Let's try this. Let's do this. Oh, okay. You trying to start recording? I did. Oh, but I can't get back to it. I need to get out of here. Go on. Oh, okay. This just froze. Oh. Okay. All right, Psalm 64. I feel like it has been a long time. Um, I know we missed two, one week into the month, and there was other stuff going on for whatever reason. So let's go ahead and just do a quick review. Hopefully catch this all up, and then we can continue on. We'll be starting with verse six tonight. And this is, Pete was mentioning how you're hearing all the evil that gets done and all these plans are being made. Six is the end of it. And now we're going to go verse seven. If you look at it, it's a really key verse because it starts with, but God. So that's where things change. So we're going to have one more week uh, or today of this, of the negative, And then we'll get to start with more of the positive. So, well, let's go ahead and go uh, through these verses um, as quickly as we can, and we'll and we'll try to catch up from there. So we know this with this psalm, David is some kind is in the middle of some kind of rebellion. Things are going against him, and he's got people slandering him. I think that's probably well, at least from my perspective, that's one of the worst places we can be is when you've got people behind your back slandering. And you have no idea what's going on. You don't know the attacks that are happening. You can't defend yourself. And it's it's a time when we literally, we have to completely trust the Lord because we're helpless. So <clears throat> that's the position that David's in. Uh, the first thing we saw with this, uh, in this section was the ruthlessness of the enemy. The ruthlessness of of the enemy. Verse one says, hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. And that was the, the first point we had. The, the, the first response we should always have is to go to prayer. And unfortunately, that's not our normally our first response. Often it's down the list of ways, but uh, the, the word that David uses here is the idea of his thoughts, his meditations, his musings. It's not that he's necessarily outwardly voicing prayer. God knows what his struggles are. And the tense of this is a continual musing over the things that are giving him trouble. So he's saying, God, you know my struggle. I want you to really hear me, understand and act on, on my prayer, on my behalf. An application statement we had on that one was prayer should be our first line of defense as trials and attacks come. <laughs> then we moved on uh, the second part of that verse with the desires to resist fear. Uh, preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Preserve my life from that dread. It's not that it's not he's not saying keep me from being healthy in a healthy way, having fear, he's saying, keep me from this dread, from living under this dark cloud. And uh, he doesn't want to live in that kind of an ominous darkness over him. And that, that would apply to all of us. That's a good thing for us to ask God to you know, help us to keep away from that fear, because we know perfect love casts that out. And as we are trusting our Lord, that type of fear won't dominate us. Um, 
We saw with, with us that proper fear is good, but the dread of something, that is what's not good. So we're not to be anxious for anything. We're to trust the Lord. And the application statement on that one, as we place our trust in Jesus, there's no room for the fear of anything else. There we go. There's no room for the fear of anything else. <laughs> then, uh, point C, uh, we looked at verse number two. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. The enemy plots and rebels. He says to hide me, cover me, protect me, shield me from these things that are coming. We desperately need God to help us in our battles. Whether that battle is physical, whether that battle is just opposition from others, whether that battle is a spiritual battle, we need his help. And he says in this verse, hide me from the secret counsel, that idea of their scheming against him. They are looking for ways to take him down from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, that rebellion from these troublemakers. This is what David was going through, and he's begging God to help him. And we saw this uh, so much in, in Jesus' life. The, uh, the attacks against our Lord were unceasing. And what David went through, what we go through, don't even pale in comparison to what our Lord went through. And for us, um, you know, let's not be the ones who are doing it. Let's not be the ones who are the, the, the insurrections, the troublemakers. But when we are receiving these attacks, we need to understand our need for divine help. We need to call on our Lord. And the application statement. Continually remind yourself that though others may be against us, God is totally for us. Then we saw... Point D, the enemy rehearses their evil. The enemy rehearses their evil. They were out to destroy David. Verse 3, who wet their tongue. They sharpen their tongue like a sword. They bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Same thing happened with Jesus. He, they were just constantly preparing to ruin reputations. And that's happening with us and our lives from other people, we have an enemy, a spiritual enemy who is a destroyer. Well, we need to make sure we're not lining up with his tactics by doing this to other people. We shouldn't be looking for how we can attack and what we can get from people. We need to put off this sin. Your application statement on D was, uh, as you notice the thoughts forming in your mind against others, ask God to help you put on kindness instead verse four the enemy has no regrets that they may shoot in secret at the perfect suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not so they have no regrets these these attacks from the enemy are often unexpected unprovoked attacks and here where we're he's referring to these bitter probably untrue words that's the things that we're hitting um Paul and Jesus experienced this with the religious leaders. They didn't fear God. Um, into verse four, they didn't fear God at all. They honestly thought they were doing God a service, which is which is appalling. And for us, uh, again, when we're actively sinning against other people, we're not thinking about a righteous God. We're not thinking about Him at all. So, for sake of time, let's go ahead and push through that one. Uh, let's not be cowards and shoot at others in secret, but instead strive to love each other and address our problems biblically. Uh, and and I, let us take a quick minute on that. Uh, it is so encouraging when you know that when you find out that you've done some type of offense and the person comes and says, hey, you did this and they just want to make it right. That's what we should be doing. There shouldn't be the, this, this animosity that's being held over. And if we address things biblically, God's honored, and that's a good thing. Uh, point F, the enemy rallies, enemy rallies around each other. Um, 
the example we use that you know I've seen this numerous times people get arrested they go to jail and when they're sitting in jail for months on end all they have time to do is tell each other how to do their crime better and it is pathetic um one reason I would be all in favor of put them on a work crew and get them busy. They don't need to sit in a jail cell. Just not good things are happening there. But with David's, uh, from David's perspective, with verse number, <coughs> with verse number five, they encourage themselves in an evil manner. They commune of laying snares privately. They say, "Who shall see them?" So with David. They were to strengthen each, each other. They were urging each other on. They were helping each other to want to do wrong. And their whole mentality was, this is going to be okay. Nobody's going to catch us. Not even God's going to catch us. We've got this. With Jesus, we saw the same exact thing happening. Those religious leaders were convincing themselves that they were on God's side. God's not against them. They can assault this rabbi who is breaking into their little... Uh, into their territory. And that's what they wanted to do. And for us, you know, we need to be actively trying to help other people glorify God, not just go about life. We need to go to the positive side of it. We need to be ur urging others as sinners will urge them to, will urge other sinners to live ungodly. We need to be urging each other to live godly. There should be that encouragement happening in our lives and then application statement there, while the world is actively pursuing evil, we should be actively pursuing holiness. And that brings us to point G. The enemy has no restriction to their evil. The enemy has no restriction to their evil. Let's have a quick word of prayer and we'll look at this verse as well. Father, thank you for your goodness. Lord, I ask tonight that you would help us as we look into your word, help us to understand it. Help us to have your spirit applying it and working actively in our lives. Lord, I pray you would uh, give me the strength to, to, to bring this message. Please keep my words accurate. Uh, help my thoughts to be centered where they should be. Pray, God, that you would keep me from being a distraction. And Lord, use this time in some way to bring glory to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Okay, point G is the enemy has no restrictions to their evil. Verse number six, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. I don't know if you've ever heard somebody describe a person this way. I've heard it numerous times. That person is so smart. If they would just take this effort that they're putting into doing wrong and try to funnel it into something doing right, they would be unstoppable. Because people are just downright brilliant at doing wrong. And they, they're, they're, they're intelligent. They, they are creative. They know how to make bad things happen. But they need to use their brains to do something productive, not to do something destructive. That, that's our culture today. There's a lot of smart people who just don't care about doing what's right. And that's kind of the idea that David is bringing out when he says they search out iniquities. They devise. They invent. They put forth a lot of effort in order to accomplish iniquities, injustice, wanting to destroy the just. They were looking for opportunities. They're searching, they're wanting them, and they're even trying to invent new ways to do it. This is what the unsaved, and unfortunately sometimes the saved, are doing. They're wanting to find new ways, second phrase here, to accomplish, they're accomplishing a diligent search. You could read this like a statement. The statement would be, we did it. We did it. We perfected our evil plan. It's kind of like they're patting themselves on their back because they got away with something and their plans are coming to fruition. They're proud of themselves for doing evil. That's a scary place to be in. 
But it's where a lot of people end up as they follow their sin. That's the natural place for it to, to go to. Uh, end of verse 6, both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. That inward part of them, the heart is deep. Uh, that is not a compliment. Just because it's deep doesn't mean they're having these wonderful, musing thoughts. The fact that their heart is deep is a bad thing. What he's saying is they're putting a lot of effort into figuring out how to hurt people more effectively. That is what David is having to deal with from these people. And their diligence, it makes them extremely dangerous unless God chooses to intervene. They're an extremely dangerous people. So David, with David, this as as we would look at this verse relating to David, these type of people are scheming against him. They are doing everything in their power to dethrone him. They're smart. They're determined. They're underhanded. And David, he knows he needs God's help to help him if anything good is going to come out of it. I'm not trying to take a rabbit trail when I when I make this comparison. When, as I was reading this verse, I mean, it, it, it just reminds me so much of our culture today with, with politics. You just got people underhanded and they're, they'll stab you in the back just to get their, their way, to get things going their direction. They're willing to do anything. And it's not just the politics of our country, it's the politics within our companies. Sometimes it's politics in the church. It's just people are willing to throw the little daggers in order to get to happen what they want to happen. That is how I've watched that in, in, in churches where people will... Uh, all you've got to do is say one little phrase to people to get them turning a direction against leadership and to, and, and, and it's so often not true, but people are proud of themselves because they're getting their way. And that is not of God. That's what David's experiencing in this, in this verse. Now, what about Jesus? How would this apply to Jesus? Well, we read <coughs> the religious leaders. The religious leaders, they, they kept having meetings. They would come together in secret. And, and the word that we could use would be they were conspiring. They were conspiring against our Lord. You remember one of the things that they would, they, if they needed other people to come in, you remember who they hired? Wicked men to come in and tell lies about Jesus about what he said, about what he didn't say. They twisted Jesus' words. I do not understand how they could have had so much sway as to convince a multitude of people to say, we want that murderer let go and we want our Messiah put to death. I don't see how they could do that. That's a lot of sway, but they did it. This was their passion. Here's what they did. Verse 6, they searched out iniquities and accomplished a diligent search. They're smart people. They know how to make these things happen. Jesus had to endure that. And he went through a whole lot more than David ever did. Let's look at how this goes to us. Okay, I'm going to start with the negative again. Searching out iniquities, looking for problems, trying to get our way, do you ever catch yourself daydreaming? I'm telling on myself with this. Daydreaming with mean thoughts. What you would do if somebody who had wronged, to somebody who had wronged you or somebody who might wrong you and you get these mean thoughts Okay, let's just use these words. You search out iniquities in your mind. I'll take care of them. I'll, I'm going to search this thing out. I'm going to devise these, I'm using words here, you know, wicked imaginations. And may, maybe you've gone farther. Maybe you've actually, you know, carried these thoughts through. 
Maybe you, whether it be verbally, whether it be physically, whether it be intentionally following our flesh to harm somebody else. That can be gossip. It can be ruining somebody's reputation. We can go after people just like they did to our Lord, just like these guys did to David. I think one of the hardest commands that I see in Scripture, at least for me, uh, let me get a couple of you to turn to a couple of passages. Uh, one short one, Luke 6, 27 and 28. Somebody grab that one for me. Okay, Sarah, Romans 12, 17 to 21. Pete, that's all I've got for right now. Um, uh, Sarah, please. Yes. Stand you which hear. Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. I have a hard time with that one. That is such a struggle. I can I can bring myself to to act nice. I can bring myself not to yell at someone or to ignore them, to pray and love and seek their good. I struggle with this. This is hard. This is our that's our measuring stick, though. That is what we are supposed to do. We are to do good to those who hate us. We're also told that we're to live peaceably with people. Pete? Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will keep burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. These verses are hard to apply. I can understand very clearly on both of these verses, here is what is being taught. I get it. We're not, it's not that we don't understand the truths. It's just extremely hard to actively apply these when you've got people who want to do you harm. Been there, done that. This is a tough thing to do. So here's my question for us. I recently had somebody that I was trying to encourage to take some positive steps and to not be thinking evil thoughts. I'm trying to not tell you what I was advising so you can come up with it too, but having them not think evil thoughts. Okay, that's easy to say. Don't think this way. How do we actively, one way, actively do this? in a practical way. And a Bible verse to come along with it would be great. How do you counsel me if I'm struggling with this? No? Okay. Anyone? I'll give you the verse that I used, or one of the verses I used. What sort of things are just? Well, certain things are love, certain things are pure, certain things are good or poor, any virtue, any praise, think on these things. Okay, that's that's true. And I can do that. I can force my mind to go somewhere. But it's hard. If I'm thinking of how somebody is wronging me and what they're in the process of doing and how I'm being hurt, it is hard to just turn that off and turn on, think on these things. How do I do this? How do you do this? Can you give me a practical step? Um, I've, I've heard uh, that praying for the person mm -hmm. makes it harder to think evil of that person. Absolutely. You cannot tell me that you are going to think righteous thoughts if you're not praying and it sounds sometimes that may sound 
we'll, we'll hear people say it this way. Oh, pray about it. Pray about it. And that's not what we're saying. We're saying let's actively be praying for someone else's betterment. I've shared this story before, but um, years ago, there was a person that I did not like. They graded on me. They, they bothered me. I did not want to be around them, etc. And God convicted me, and I began praying for them. And I purposefully did my best not to pray, God, would you please change that person? They are driving me fatty. I don't like it. was, God, would you please bless them? Would you please minister to them? Come to find out that person was going through so much trial. That person was being cheated on by a spouse. That person was working through all of this. They needed somebody praying for them. And what ended up happening was that person did not change a lick. They didn't change. But you know what did change? Me. God changed me. And gave me an appreciation for them, not a hatred. We need to pray for people, genuinely praying for their good. That's an excellent point. How else do we make our minds think on things that are christ honoring? There's some low-hanging fruit we can grab on this. Anyone? No, point taken. Bless them, don't curse them. Right. We bless, not curse. You may not even know like what bless. Mm -hmm. and, and let's just Yeah, we, it's not that you, you know, you have to go up and do some kind of religious thing. It's <laughs> encourage. We say things kind. We don't curse. We don't, and I don't mean language either, but, you know, we don't curse. We bless. That's a good one. Yes. Temptation and what? And desert. In the desert? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Jesus says, uh, learning uh, toda la Biblia, totality Bible, Jesus. Therefore, Used all the Bible? All the Bible. Uh, uh, Satanás. Satanás atacó a Jesús con tentaciones humanas. Satan attacked Jesus with human temptations. Hambre, vana gloria, vanagloria, sentimientos humanos, human feelings. Eh, y Jesús empezó a hablar de la Biblia. And Jesus began to talk about the Bible. Independientemente si era el pasaje que Satanás estaba citando o no. Whether or not it was the passage exact passage that Satan was trying to bring up or not. Jesus se enfocó en la Biblia. Jesus focused on the Bible. Y a veces nosotros somos tentados a sometimes we're tempted to sentir uh, sentir to heal sentir, uh, aborrecer a una persona uh, uh -huh. a que nos cae mal una persona sí. A dejarnos guiar por nuestros sentimientos. To want to push someone away to blow them, someone just to go off of our own feelings. Como no me agrada, la muy cae mal. Like I don't like them, they, they don't, they're just not the kind of person I like. Not, yeah, not someone I love. Creo que en esa situación debemos enfocarnos en, situation, focus en la Biblia, on the Bible. independientemente cuál sea el versículo que nos acordamos. Whatever the verse is that we remember that time. No importa si habla de eh, cómo el pan lo partió de sus discípulos. Whether, whether it's about how Jesus broke the bread with his disciples. O de... Uh, el caballo se prepara para la batalla y el caballo de la victoria. How, um, the horse prepared for battle, but 
Dios nos va a llevar a, a Jesucristo. Y recordar cómo el sacrificio de Él nos perdonó a nosotros. Y eso nos ayuda a cambiar nuestra mente. Y orar que Dios nos, nos ayude a cambiar nuestro corazón. Y como dice el pastor, orar porque Dios bendice a la persona. Que nos está causando eso. Uh, no sabemos su situación. Tal vez espero que la nosotros. Pero sabemos que en nuestra relación con Dios estamos llamados a ser a compasivos y amados los enemigos. That's good. Yes, James. For me, like I have to guard my heart and learn, you know, not to fall into the certain people that want to argue about things and just want to argue. And Absolutely. it drains you and it's it's Absolutely. And that's that's saved or unsaved. Right. There are certain people we just need to avoid those conversations with. Absolutely. I appreciate too, uh, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit with Obed's. One of the emphasis that he was bringing out was be in the word. We must, if, if a pastor that I knew once said this, in the decades of counseling that he had done, never, never had he had a time when someone came to him who had some deep troubling issues and he always asked the same question, how's your time in the word been? Never had he had somebody say, it's going great. It's usually, I uh, haven't been in the Bible. I haven't been reading my Bible. You know what? It's not get your checklist done. It's let's let God speak to us. And I'm, 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 I'm thinking back from this morning, this idea of faith. Faith is not just, well, I believe one time, 2,000 years ago, this happened. Faith is letting God be right. And act on what God says. We follow him. There are times when, it, you know, it's not easy. I get it. But if I really believe him and that he is right and that he has my best interest at heart, what he says is good, I should follow him. I'm going to do it. That's faith. We need to follow him. We need to be doing this when we're having these struggles in our lives. We will be in this book seeking for his help. So that's an excellent point, both of those. We need to be praying for people. Uh, that was the first one that somebody had brought up. I just want to encourage us with this. I personally need to be begging God with, I can't do this. I need you. I need your grace to work in my life because I'm weak and I'm struggling. He already knows. But when I'm struggling, I, I need to voice this. I need to tell God, I need you. I'm too weak for this one. I'm too weak for most, for all. I need God's grace. And for us to admit that and say, you're good. I'm weak. I need your strength. That's worship. It's making much about God. And he's honored by this. We need to take these things to him. These are some practical things. And in a way, what I don't like, what, what, what it's... What's um, difficult is trying to tell someone to do something, and I, I don't know the word. I'm not good with my words right now. Um, I don't want to just throw this little verbiage out at them. Oh, pray about it. I don't want to give them this, not the placebo effect. You do this little thing, do this formula, and everything turns out okay. You need to trust Jesus and follow him wholeheartedly. And usually our problems have taken a long time to get into, and we want a pill to get us out of it. It doesn't work that way. Discipline is what people need, godly discipline. So for us, these depths that people can plummet to, they're really deep. And we need our Lord's protection, but it's not just people. 
We've got a spiritual enemy. There is spiritual warfare that is happening regularly with us. I'll, I'll, I'll say it this way. Demons delight to see us fall. The devil and his cohorts want to see us go down and put a blight on the name of his enemy, his main enemy, Jesus. You and I, we need to be sure that we are doing everything in our power to bring every thought captive, to pull those thoughts back in. When you and I start going down these trails of devising evil, we are giving him a foothold. We need to purposefully be looking to bring those thoughts captive. The way we prevent falling is to intentionally focus on the gospel, intentionally meditate on scripture, intentionally call out to God for his help. That has to happen if we are going to be successful. Any comments, questions? Our application statement here, you can still make a comment after, uh, de determine and ask God to help you to focus on him and his word instead of on revenge or vindication. Yeah. Yes. There. The, it seems like the default is, is that we allow uh, ourselves to be counseled by our uh, our feelings, our our uh, circumstances, and um, we need to be the one kind of counseling what's going on. In the okay, I get you it. Know, for instance, like David saying, "Why are you cast down, O my soul?" You know, what is he doing? He's not just letting his what's happening on the inside tell him what to do, tell him what to think. He is actively. I mean. Sounds weird, but no, know, that's that's he's, exactly he's, right. He's cross-examining himself. He's questioning himself in light of the character of God, right? And um, I mean, we 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 always have a little, uh, you know, no matter whatever circumstance we go into, just by default, there's a flesh side of us that's going to tell us everything is going wrong, how we should respond wrongly. But uh, through the power of Christ in us. We have the capability, of, you know, say no, you know, self, you listen. This is, this is not, uh, this is not right. This will not, this is not end in anything good. Um, and uh, you gotta, you gotta preach to yourself. That's exactly right. I was talking to somebody recent who was saying that um, usually they can just. Uh, discuss what's going on and they end up counseling themselves. They, we, we know answers and we end up this, you know, we need to look at what is truth. Is it true that everybody hates me and everybody's against me? No, that's not true. Now I may have all the people in the world against me, but if I know my God is for me and he will never leave me or forsake me, I can cling to that. Not everybody's against me. That's a lot. And I'll say that most of the time when we get those what was me thoughts, it's a lie. And we need to preach to ourselves. That's good. Very good advice. Anyone else? The one song about quieting yourself like a winged child. I don't know where that is, but I quieted myself like a winged child. The song. Don't know that. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's part of it. It's about whining. Yes. Yes. You're absolutely right. Because if we're satisfied with him, we're out. As we are complaining and whining, we're not satisfied with our Lord. You can't do both. Excellent point. Thank you. Yes. Sometimes when we examine ourselves and see what we're fussed about, do we realize it's a really small thing? And then it's a terribly embarrassing, it's a really small thing. One time I got upset over ten dollars. Ten dollars, and it wasn't as if I was so poor that I needed that ten dollars. 
that was a stupid thing to get upset over ten dollars. Do you ever find that we've had an argument with someone? You say the same thing. I got upset about what? I got upset because somebody looked at me wrong or they put something where I wish it hadn't been. I'm so glad my wife doesn't jump on me for putting things where they don't go. Don't laugh at me. It's, I, I, somebody talked about a um, having a magic coffee table. I don't know if you've had one of those. You leave stuff on it and it slings itself up. And you have no idea how that happened. But somehow it got cleaned up. I have one of those. I have a house like that. It just it happens. And I don't do a thing, hardly. <laughs> so I'm very thankful for that. We, 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 we get upset about little nothings. You're right. We need to bring those thoughts captive. Psalm 131. Verse 2. Looking at the same one? Read it for us. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a human child. Excellent. It's a real short book. Let Israel hope in the Lord. That's what Let us hope in our Lord. All right. Well, thank you for your input. Let's go ahead and close on a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for loving us. Lord, I thank you that you are in control. I thank you that Lord, all of the enemies that would desire to harm us are, are under you. And they, Lord, you control it. Help us to trust you. Help us to have our confidence in you. Please help us this week to walk with you, to intentionally follow you, to intentionally desire to obey you. Use us, Lord, to, to further your kingdom in some way. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.